So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be replacing the bearings inside the motor housing uh, of this new. It's very common for the bearings to go bad. And one of the telltale signs that you'll see is the actual um, sled will only be moving a little bit. So it wouldn't be moving as much or will stop moving altogether, but you can still hear the motor going. So that's a sign that potentially the bearings are bad, but the motor is still good. So first what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the clips inside this lead uh, so that we can remove this metal piece uh, that uh, that protects the inner side of the sled. So to remove these clips, it's really easy. You can use a screwdriver, but uh, what I prefer to do is use a combination of screwdriver and uh, some type of prying tool. So you can use a, a plastic prying bar. Or you can use one of these squeegees for like flattening out um, vinyl. So first I start off and I insert this into the clip. And what that does is it creates enough room for me just to easily stick in the screwdriver and pop open the clip. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll do this all the way around. And once that's done, we're gonna remove these six screws here, uh, which um, uh, which hold this, uh, this metal uh, piece straight to the bottom of the slide. So let's do this first and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've gone ahead and removed all the screws and then just be kind of conscientious uh, inside of this or, or within the screw, there's this uh, a piece of plastic. Uh, it's kind of like a cushion between the head of the screw and the metal piece. So just make sure you keep those so we can put them back when you install the screws back. Um, and then obviously, you don't have a Ziploc bag or a little bowl. Keep all your um, screws separate and then label them. That way, you know exactly where they want because it's going to be quite a bit of screws. So uh, next up, we're going to remove the metal cover here. And uh, once you remove it, we're going to set it to the side. And as you can see here, we have quite a bit of stuff to do here. So some people might be deterred by just looking at all this electrical wiring, but it's actually pretty quite easy. So here we have a chip um, and, uh, and this chip runs down through here. And then uh, here we have the speaker. Okay. And then, um, this speaker is connected uh, here, and then this chip is connected here as well. And then we, I believe we have another sensor that is connected here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to start off by unplugging these sensors. Um, obviously making sure that we're gentle with them. Um, so we can start off and unplug the sensor. It does take a little bit of, of muscle here. Maybe if it's easier, you can kind of just undo it from here. And then there you go. We have one sensor off. And the other side, we'll do the same thing. We're going to take off the, the sensor. Um, they're, they're underneath this little clip here, holding them together. So you can just kind of carefully... Um, Try to take them out from underneath the clip. Which makes it a whole lot easier to take off. There we have one. There's the other one. As you can see, now it's much easier to just kind of unplug it. And then uh, I guess one thing that you want to make sure is when you unplug it, don't, don't pull it from here. You always want to pull it from the actual base of the cords. Um, that way you don't have to worry about breaking any wires. So uh, you can, you probably won't be able to see here, but there's a flat end here. And that flat end goes into this little uh, groove here. Uh, so just make sure when you put them back, you put them back together. And then um, the last one, which is this one right here, we're going to go ahead and uh, try to pull out. 
Um, another thing you can do is you can kind of wedge it with a screwdriver if you if you can't get a good hold on it. Just gently, you know, use a screwdriver to pry it back. And then uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to cut these two uh, zip ties. This one right here and this one right here. Obviously being extra careful not to cut the wires. So you can use a pair of scissors and then uh, being careful not to cut the wires. We're going to cut these zip ties off. That's going to release the wires and allow us to get into the housing underneath. So as you can see here, we release the wires now. And then these, these, uh, these zip ties go onto a zip tie uh, mount. So this, you probably zoom in a little bit, but you see this, we can take this out and replace it with a new zip tie. And when we replace it, we're gonna wanna go underneath that, that base to use this as a base. Uh, and then obviously if you don't have a zip tie, uh, another thing that you can use um, is a um, a grocery a grocery store tag like the ones that you use for your vegetables, um, the little the little green tags or the ones that come from like a bag of tortillas. You can use that uh, that wire uh, in in lieu of a uh, zip tie if you don't have one. So now that we have this, uh, these wires are gonna. Uh, get ran right back down through the bottom, which is um, where the uh, where the um, where the rest of the the, the motor housing is. Um, but the last piece of the puzzle is this circuit board here. Okay, so this circuit board is mounted with adhesive onto that um, onto this this block here. This it's kind of like a foam block. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you could always, you also use a blow dryer, but it takes a little bit more time. We're going to use a heat gun to slowly and gently heat this up to uh, loosen the adhesive. And then once it's uh, nice and warm, we'll pull it up gently and it will release the circuit board and we'll be able to remove this base. So we'll be right back. So we've removed it and you can see here that adhesive is stuck on there. Leave the adhesive on there because you can reheat it to reactivate the adhesive. So we'll be reusing that to put it back down in there. Okay, so now uh, this could be a little bit of the tricky part. What we're going to do is we're going to lift this entire piece and you can use this little hose here. Okay, uh, but before we do that, uh, what we're going to be doing is um, removing all of these screws here. Um, and what that's gonna do is gonna release the mesh. Um, and once it releases the mesh, we'll be able to completely take out this base unit. Uh, these screws are really small. Um, you could uh, do them by hand or you could use your drill gun. Um, well, my recommendation is you can remove them by, uh, by drill gun, but when you put them back, uh, it's best for you to use uh, either a pen screwdriver, uh, a little electric ones, or by hand, because these you can easily strip since this is all plastic. So feel free to use a gun to remove them, but remember when you put them back on, to either do them by hand um, or use one of those uh, powered pen um, uh, screwdrivers. Okay, so we've uh, gone ahead and removed all the clips. Now we have the mesh, which is completely released. We're going to go ahead as we're going to start removing this by going upwards and you can see the cables uh, should be able to uh, go to the bottom side of the base, which is where we need to access. So just make sure they're, they're free to go down there by themselves. So with that, now they've came off. Now we can remove the base. That was the most time consuming part of this project. So here we have a few things. So here we have one bearing, and what we want to do is check the bearing, 
see if the bearing is moving freely. There's no like cracking or anything like that. Um, you can feel, feel if it's a bad bearing, okay? Bearing looks good. We're checking these bearings as well. We're rotating them, making sure that we don't feel like any clunky. You'll, you'll feel, you'll see the difference right away when it's a, a bad bearing. It'll make noise or it'll feel resistance or you'll feel it kind of like a when you have a bald spot on a tire, it goes click, 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 click. Um, so yeah, all these bearings are good. And now we're gonna continue going and taking a look at the motor housing itself. You can go ahead and remove these brackets here. Uh, these brackets uh, are the ones that the metal plate grabs onto. So we'll use them later, uh, but we can remove them for now, no big deal. So the next part is we're going to release this base here, which houses the motor itself so that we can access the bearing. And I can, just by turning the motor here, I can feel uh, resistance and just feels kind of weird. So I'm gonna say it's probably the bearing that's, that's bad on the motor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all six of these screws here. You can access um, all six of these screws by turning your snoo over on its side. Um, or upside down, whichever, um, you know, on its side is probably easier just because you don't want to come off. Gonna remove these here, uh, they're Allen keys. Some models might even have Phillips, I think, uh, but you're gonna take these off with the Allen. And then sometimes what will happen is uh, once you start um, loosening them, uh, you might get spinning here because they have nuts on this side. So you might have to hold the nut on this side uh, and then hold the other side with the Allen key or vice versa just to remove them. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all six of them. So to remove the screws that we were just talking about, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 9 32nd um, a key here to hold this in place. And then on the back end, I'm going to use a 5 32nd Allen key. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this here because I don't want the screw to spin. And while I'm holding this here on the underside, I'm going to go ahead and remove it here. So on the other side, I'm gonna remove it here. And then once I've gotten ahead, once I've gone ahead and removed it, I'll pull this out. And on this side, you'll be able to see that now it's come off. So I have this the nut here, and then the washer's still in there. So I'll remove the washer. Probably helps if you have tweezers, but if you don't, remove the washer. And then what I'll do is I'll put this back together just like this, just so I can store it into my Ziploc bag for the time being. Do this to all six of them, and then you'll be able to remove this here. Okay, so now we've removed them. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is these cables here are gonna go through these two slots. We're going to, similar to what we did with the other base, we're gonna push them through so that we can pull it out. Um, one thing to be, uh, aware of uh, is obviously making sure that you remember which side goes to this side um, and then another thing that you want to be aware of is that this base still is not completely free although the screws have come off there is um, a, a wire harness that is hooked up to the circuit board that goes in here so if you can see here um, well first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this cable here so I know that this one goes on this side. Okay, and the next thing I'm gonna do is, um, is I'm going to pull this out here. As you can see here, uh, the circuit, the, the, the cable is connected to that circuit board, you, right there. So what we're gonna do is we have to remove this, this, this cable first before we can completely uh, remove the the base. So just take your time here. This is a little bit hard to get to. Um, I would suggest maybe contacting someone who has small fingers or getting some tweezers uh, to get this off. Um, be very patient because obviously uh, you don't want to mess up this circuit board. Uh, mechanical things you can easily fix. These circuit boards would have to be sent out to a specialist if there's an issue with it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and remove it and then I'll come right back to you. So then, now that I've gone ahead and uh, released this orange cable, um, you'll see we still have another brown cable, a black cable, and then we uh, have this cable, which is completely stuck. 
uh, on there. So we want to completely release this. So we'll start off by removing uh, the brown cable and then we'll release uh, this black cable here. And uh, once we release this brown cable here, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, remove uh, this uh, zip tie and release this cable and we should be completely ready to remove this. All right, so the next part is gonna to be to actually remove the motor. Uh, so what we will be doing is we'll be removing this, these, these, these suspension braces and then we'll be removing these four bolts here and then that should release the motor itself from this housing. And then after that, uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be opening up this plastic housing to actually remove the, the motor itself. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna remove these, uh, these suspension braces and then just be cognizant that when you remove, this is under pressure, as you can see the size of this compared to where it's supposed to go. So it's constantly under pressure. Um, so uh, when you remove it, just be aware that this is gonna wanna jump somewhere. So I'm gonna remove them, hold, holding this down. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this here. And then what I'll do is while it's still attached to the other side, I'll just take my uh, screwdriver here and, and just pop it a little bit. That way it stays there. And once it's been popped from the base, then I can just go ahead and remove this other side here. And then put that to the side. And then, uh, so then the next thing we're gonna do is remove these four screws here, which should remove it off the bracket or off the base. I'm separating the screws so I remember which ones go with what. This one kind of have to go at an angle so you don't want to damage the circuit board. There we go. And kind of same with this one. There we go. And now this should be able to come off. Um, there's, as you could, there's wires that run through this track here. I forgot to take out the wires. So before you get to this step, I uh, remove these here. Uh, if not, no problem. Just you know, move your hardware out of the way, and then we'll turn it over and uh, release those wires from that um, track. So flip this over. And then here we have these wires. So we'll just remove them gently uh, one by one um, from this track to release that, uh, that motor. There we go. So now here we have the motor. Uh, next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing these four screws here and that will open up the housing for the motor.
um, so it seems as if uh, these uh, these gaskets need to come off uh, before we can pull it out. Or actually, it might just come out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, don't need to take them off. But we'll remove this here. And uh, we have this motor here. So, um, it's easy to kind of feel that it's coming off here, but these bearings are the ones that go bad. We have two bearings, one on this side and one on the other side. Uh, so what we'll be doing next is uh, pressing these bearings out. Um, there's two tiny little Allen keys in here, one right here and one right here. Uh, this will remove this housing here, uh, which will give us access to the lower part of this motor. So uh, we'll grab an Allen key and uh, get started on that next. Okay, so two things. We've gone ahead and we've used a vise and a punch to punch out this, uh, this center kind of like axle. And then what we're going to do now is open this up. It's a little hard because of the magnets, but you open this up just like this and um, it should come apart and then once you've taken that apart uh, as you can see here here are the bearings and there's shavings in there which kind of show that the the, the bearings broken and we're going to continue to punch this out all the way through and then what that will do is uh take this out here and then uh what's next is uh, we're going to take out these bearings and the way we're going to do it is we're going to either use a punch or an allen key to uh, punch out either bearing on either side so we'll use we'll use it at an angle kind of just like that to push this one out and then vice versa this side to this side to punch it out okay so as you can see here we've removed this bearing and the way we did it is by using a vise to kind of hold it and then punching it out with the punch. And then we remove this bearing in the front and punching it out through the opposite side. Um, there are two completely different sizes. One is smaller, the other one is bigger. Um, what do I, one thing I do recommend is putting a zip tie on this cable here to give it support uh, because it's really easy for this to come off and then you'll end up having to um, so I'll solder it back on and then applying RTV. Um, so now that it's off, kind of clean it a little bit. Uh, but I can see here, this rear one is completely seized. I can barely turn it by hand. And this front one's not bad, but we're just gonna go ahead and, and uh, replace it. So one thing we do have to do is just to make sure we're getting the right uh, bearings. What we're gonna do, we're gonna measure the inner diameter of the shaft which is 3.8. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of variance here. Go ahead and put this at zero. So if it's about 3.8, 3.9, then you just round that off to four. So it's four and the shaft went on both of them. So the inner, we can safely say that the inner diameter on both of these is four. Uh, Cause it went right through both of them. So inner diameter is four millimeters. Outer diameter, on the larger one, 16 millimeters. And then the thickness is five millimeters. So this one's 16 millimeters and outer diameter. And then we said it was four millimeters in inner diameter. And then once again, the thickness is five millimeters. So we know what we need to look for. This one, it's it's a, it's laser engraved six, three, four, Z is in Zulu. So if you're able to look it up that way, look it up. If not, then use the measurements to find the correct bearing. On um, this bearing here, we have a outer diameter of 12 millimeters, a thickness of four millimeters as well. And then we said that the, the shaft is four millimeters, which is the same for the inner diameter of, uh, of this one, four millimeters. So uh, yeah, use that information to go ahead and uh, find the bearings that you need. Um, and 
if I can find the source from, I'll put the link in the description. Um, if not, we're probably just gonna try to find them in a the local hardware store. And then what we'll be doing is we'll be putting these right back in here and then uh, re-stealing this by uh, putting it back in, putting the Allen screws, uh, the, hex, the hex screws, um, and then putting it back together.